Welcome to an update in the Care Collab series. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate your time. Mary G Orchids and myself grow this orchid and well, the last time we saw them was exactly a year ago. So it was time for an update, but also because look, she's a first time bloomer for me. And the reason I'm painting her, well, the paintbrush is dry, but the reason I'm doing this is because this little one is attracting microscopic aphids. And in order for me to show off my blooms, I don't like to see little green critters in there. It's horrible. As you can see, I've already suffered some bud blast, and that is because I've been handling the spikes and the buds as they were progressing, trying to keep the little green icky sticky little aphids out of my blooms so i started with garlic alcohol when the spikes were developing but that was a little bit too radical because i lost a spike down here completely lost it so i've been very very careful to just use a dry paintbrush and counteract any that might be still lurking on my blooms and buds by brushing them off that's the only headache i have had with this orchid since I got her in my collection when she was itty bitty and tiny, she was only this little back part right here. These little growths down here when I got her, oh my goodness. And when you grow orchids and you get them as seedlings and they say X amount of years until blooming and then you have to wait another two years because well, the nursery got it wrong or the acclimating process took longer. <laughs> this is result in my opinion. So thank you very, very much, Mary G, for joining me in on this Care Collab update of our Dendrobium Lutein Blanc. I don't even think I mentioned that at the beginning because I'm too preoccupied with brushing away aphids. She has a beautiful fragrance. It's a heady burnt molasses kind of fragrance, but you really have to get close, at least in my case. But I am super surprised at her fragrance. I was not expecting that at all. Since I got her, she had to be potted up, not because she was outgrowing the pot, it's because I wanted the pot, but her lava rock and semi-hydro setup is working a treat for this one. It never actually objected to just lava rock and semi-hydro in the smaller pot, and then I bumped her up into this one size up square pot. The root system was astoundingly great, and the repot was just an up pot. I didn't even clean the root system or anything. Very wary of using lava rock in a setup all by itself because it's super, super destructive to the root system when it comes time to repot. So I pulled her out of the pot, put her into this pot, and thank goodness I didn't set her back or anything. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having these blooms. Fantastic. She lives outside all year round. My temperatures have not dropped to five degrees Celsius yet. The lowest I have had has been eight this season. That is too cold for me but this orchid can take it and she is now living on the south side, which is a covered area. But the angle of the sun is so low in the sky that she gets direct sun every single day when the sun is out and lots of airflow, as you can see. I just can't get away from all this airflow, which is a good thing. She seems to appreciate it. So only for filming, it's an issue. But in summer, she doesn't get any direct sun. She pretty much stays in the same location no matter what time of year it is, except the angle of the sun regulates whether she gets direct sun or not. And I have resumed fertilizing her when I saw the spikes form. She now gets 300 parts per million. Every single time that I feel that the pot is a little bit lighter. Prior to fertilizing, I flush her through twice just with plain RO water, and then I fill up the pot with 300 parts per million of fertilizer. I am so pleased. You know, it's always nice to get a first time bloomer. And then you wonder whether you've made the right decision based on the pictures that you see when you buy an orchid that is not blooming size. But I'm really pleased with her. It takes forever for these spikes to develop. It's been three months almost. Absolutely amazing how long that took. But you know what? I find that the longer spikes take to develop and then the buds take another forever to develop, blooms should last quite a long time in proportion to how long the spikes take. And the blooms, they have a spiny texture to them. So there's a lot of structure on the blooms themselves, not just the beautiful little markings. She is very delicate, but yeah, 
That fragrance of heady burnt molasses, it's not unpleasant, but it is a surprise. I was so not expecting that. Anyway, this is my Dendrobium Lutein Blanc. Mary G. Orchids also has one, and her video will be linked in the description below. So thank you, Mary, very, very much for joining me on this update of our Dendrobium Lutein Blancs. Really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing how yours is doing which is much more mature than mine. But now I'm in the blooming size league, so I feel accomplished with this one. Thank you also to everybody that watched this video. I really appreciate it very much. The original video will also be in my description if you want to go back and have a look and see what she looked like a year ago in comparison to now. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.